A very good morning to Dr. Pramita Damodaran, Chair of the Menopause Subdivision of the, of the Obstetrical and Gynecological Society of Malaysia, as well as the Chair of the Developmental Group of the CPG on Management of Menopause in Malaysia, Dr. Hu Mei Lin, President of the Obstetrical and Gynecological Society of Malaysia, Dr. Ho Chun Moi, President of the Malaysian Menopause Society, Professor Datuk Dr. Siti Zawiyah Omar, President, College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Academy of Medicine, Malaysia, doctors, ladies, gentlemen, and members of the media. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you to the official launch of the Clinical Practice Guidelines on the Management of Menopause in Malaysia. My name is Dr. Shireen Kaur Manocha, and I will be your MC today. Before I continue, I would like to humbly request that everyone switches their phone to silent mode during the course of this event to avoid any disruption to the speakers or video presentations. I would like to take this time to also highlight that this launch event is a separate occasion from the 29th International OGSM Congress that is ongoing concurrently in this same hotel. Healthcare professionals and other attendees who have been solely invited for this launch and this launch alone will not be permitted to join the activities of the main Congress unless registered for the aforementioned conference. Thank you for your kind cooperation. All right then, what is menopause? Essentially, it is a time in a woman's life when her menstrual cycles have ceased for a year. During this time, a woman may experience a plethora of symptoms due to the waxes and wanes of her hormone levels before their gradual decline. Doctors or not, many of us are very quick to identify the classic symptoms of menopause, the hot flashes, the mood swings, insomnia, memory issues, palpitations. Yet, it is taken for granted that a lady should just quietly embrace these uncomfortable changes which may last for years as it is just a phase in her life. Yes, menopause is a phase in her life, not a disease. Yes, every woman will go through menopause, but the key word I would like to stress upon is that she is experiencing symptoms. Apart from the few physical symptoms of menopause I mentioned earlier, we must not forget that a woman going through menopause will also experience marked physiological changes in the various systems in her body. Cardiovascular, musculoskeletal, dermatological and digestive systems, just to name a few. And these changes may start off silently, but are the makings of the constellation of aches, pains and complaints to come later on. A lady going through menopause or the menopause transition may go to her doctor who might not necessarily be her gynecologist because she may be experiencing physical or mental discomfort and would like a solution. As doctors, it is our duty to treat our patients within our best management, but this is only possible if we are equipped with adequate knowledge and the right materials. Hence, it is vital that we as healthcare professionals have a guide to help us manage our patients properly, especially patients who will go through something as definite and natural as menopause. The clinical practice guidelines on the management of menopause was long awaited because as of 2010, we only had a CPG that solely focused on hormone replacement therapy. During her tenure in the menopause subdivision of the OGSM, Dr. Pramita Damodaran recognized the importance of having a fairly standardized protocol for the management of menopause in our country and took this as a challenge. She joined hands with the Malaysian Menopause Society and was ably helped by a committee of esteemed consultants to conceive a thorough yet wholesome guideline for healthcare providers to utilize as a guide in the clinical management of menopause. It was nothing short of a tedious task for Dr. Pramita and her team, but here we are today celebrating the official launch of this guideline to the nation. 
Without further ado, I would like to present the woman of the hour, Dr. Pramita Damodaran, Chair of the Developmental Group of the CPG on Management of Menopause in Malaysia and Chair of the Menopause Subdivision of the OGSM. Good morning. We are finally here. Good morning, Dr. Hu Mei Lin, President of the Obstetrical and Gynecological Society of Malaysia. Dr. Ho Chun Moi, President of the Malaysian Menopause Society. Dato, Doctor, uh, Dato Professor Dr. Siti Zawiya, President of the College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Academy of Medicine, Malaysia. My wonderful team from the developmental group of this CPG, Tan Sri, Puan Sri, Datuks and Datins, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen, my friends, we are finally here. And I want this to be the tagline for today, we are finally here. The story began as an idea, as a small idea that came into me in the late 2018. It slowly took shape, it took form in my head, and over the next few months, built itself into this wonderful group that is the foundation of the clinical practice guidelines on management of menopause in Malaysia. My dear friends on this group, with me, we are finally here. Prof Emeritus, Dr. Nick Mohamed Nasri, I first brought this idea to you of a simpler consensus statement on menopause and you said, Premita, you need to do a CPG and only you can do it, Premita. And I followed your advice. And those words were the driving force that kept me going the last three years. For many of you who may not know what the difference is, um, as consensus statements is just two to three pages, a CPG is like a whole book. Now, Dr. Raman, Professor S.P. Chan, who is not here today, 30 years ago, you took this first year master's student and whipped her into place uh, with research and academia. My interest in menopause and osteoporosis was because of both of you. Thank you for walking this journey with me and I could not have done it with anyone else. Dr. Ho, you are an inspiration, an icon in the menopause society and such a pleasure to work with. Professor Dr. Nick Haslina, who is not here with us today, you used to fly down from Kelantan at every meeting for putting that, and thank you for putting that human touch on the quality of life aspects of this CPG. I haven't forgotten you, Professor Jamia, my dear Jamia, always coming to meetings with not only chapters of excellent work you had written, but also Tupperwares of food. <laughs> we ate right and we worked hard. Thank you, Jamia. And finally, my dear Ade. Associate Professor Dr. B.K. Ng, who never failed to answer those midnight calls um, when I was in a panic about what to do about certain aspects of the CPG. I'm so sorry, Wendy, I'm going to apologize to her. But, and, for always, and thank you for always helping me tie up the loose ends and always, always, always being there. Thank you very much. There could not have been a better group of like-minded individuals totally dedicated towards improving menopausal health in this country. Brainstorming sessions, lively discussions, latest journals, expert guidelines from around the world. You name it, we knew it. Thank you, Sheena Subash, for being there and putting all this work together. My friends, we are here. We need to thank all our internal reviewers for their critical assessment. A special big thanks to Dato Professor Dr. Siti Zawiya Omar for taking over Dr. Michael Sami's role in the CPG and welcoming this collaboration and changing a flight to Singapore to the evening one so that you can attend this morning ceremony. Our huge heartfelt thank you to Professor Delphin Tan from the Philippines and Professor Rodney Baber from Australia. They were our external reviewers, just having their names, because these are big names in the menopausal field in the world. And just having your names on our CPG is giving us such credibility. Everyone, we are here. On 13th of June, we were invited to present this CPG 
in front of Yang Berbahagia Tantri Hisham at the Putrajaya, and we had a verbal yes. On the 13th of July, our confirmatory letter arrived. It was a definite yes, and the wonderful thing is, it was a yes without needing any changes anymore. I, and here is where I would really like to thank Dr. Amin and his group from HTA. Many times, many weekends and many nights, I used to send him emails and said, maybe I give up, lah, Dr. Amin. And then you said, never mind, I am here. And continued to hold our hands until the very end. This CPG is a joint collaboration between the menopause subdivision of the OGSM, Malaysian Menopause Society, and the College of ONG Academy of Medicine Malaysia. I must thank the OGSM for being patient with me as we struggle to get the CPG on the road after having to go through many hurdles. Dr. Hu Mei Lin, you always believed that I would get it done. Thank you. Prema, where are you? You have been a, a gem. I, I don't know how to thank you. There are no words that um, I, I can put together. Uh, you have helped us through so many Sunday meetings, events, and finally this big launch. This is your CPG as it is mine, our, our CPG. And finally, the pharmaceutical companies. Now, I'm going to name you and you're all going to say yay when it's your name, okay? Who stood silently at our wings, waiting patiently, patiently waiting for this CPG to come out. Let me mention your names, Abbott. Say yay. Yeah. yeah. Manarini. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Bayer. Yeah. DKSH. Yeah. Amgen. Yeah. Crab Synergy of Harmoniaga. Yeah. Venesis. Yeah. Orion. Yeah. Pahang Pharmacy. I hope I didn't miss out anyone. Everyone, we are finally here. We came into this together to champion the cause of the aging woman in our aged Malaysia. Also because, you know, we took it personally because we're all also aging women. But that's, that's besides the point. We wanted to change perceptions by healthcare workers, by family, by society, by employers of all these women who were above 50, and policy makers, and of course, the media. Menopausal women, are still healthy, important, and the integral part of our Malaysian keluarga, not a burden, but as a treasured individual. We did not want our menopausal women to ignore their lives or know where to go to for help. Menopause is a time to be joyous. MHT use is now, we know, approved and well, and is such a good thing for the younger menopausal woman because it carries tremendous advantages, making her healthier, making her stronger and more productive. We need to give her that quality of life. Finally, I must say thank you to Yang Berbahagia Tuan Kairi Jamaluddin for taking time off his busy parliamentary week, uh, week to record this special address and launching and endorsing the CPG. And finally, to my family, thank you so much. This CPG went on holidays. It went towards my, during my son's college admission. It went over the weekends that we were all supposed to spend together, public holidays and many, many nights. It made me have hot flushes, night sweats, palpitations. <laughs> it made me irritable and annoying, but family, we are finally here. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, we are here, but actually we are not done. What's on the pipeline is patient information pamphlets in various languages, a menopause certification course for healthcare workers, international menopause meetings, and letting the world know how we manage our menopausal women. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just the beginning. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Premita, for that wonderful speech. The effort that you and your team have put in into making this CPG was truly inspiring and definitely worthwhile. Next, it is my pleasure to call upon Dr. Hu Mei Lin, President of the OGSM, to say a few words.
Good morning, everyone. Dr. Pramita Damodaran, Chair of the Clinical Practice Guidelines Committee and the OGSM Menopause Committee Chair. Dr. Ho Chon Moy, President of the Malaysian Menopause Society. Dr. Professor Dr. Siti Zawia Omar, President of the College of, the Obst of Obstetricians and Gynecology, Academy Medicine of Malaysia. Distinguished guests, colleagues, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. It is such a great honour and pleasure to be here today to be part of this momentous occasion, the launch of the 2022 Clinical Practice Guidelines on the Management of Menopause in Malaysia. Now, I too have a vested interest as I'm heading towards that era in my life, and I was so happy that this is possible today. Menopause is also known as the change of life. For some, it is a time of liberation, of celebration. No more worries about periods, period pains, no more red flags in, uh, at inopportune times, and no more worries about pregnancy. But for others, this period equals to suffering. Hot flushes, vaginal dryness, changes to the body, mood swings. Now we know it need not be so. Throughout my career, already there has been a, a shift in the thinking. When I started out, HRT was in vogue. It was, we gave it out like tic tacs. Everyone needs to go on HRT. We need to protect bones. We need to protect the woman. And then came the paper that we all know about that came about in 2002. And there were a lot of problems with that paper, but that paper caused lasting damage to how HRT is viewed and how menopause is managed. But now, with the birth of this CPG, finally, we now know that there are good treatment options to enable women to sail through menopause. Having this in our, on our desks and in our pockets increases the confidence to prescribe or recommend, or recommend treatments to optimize a woman's health and, mel and mental well-being during the menopause and beyond, so that we can all live our life to the fullest. OGSM is also proud to announce that we will be sending a copy to all our members via eBlast at the moment of the launch of this CPG. So watch, watch out for that on, on your mobile phones. It will also be available on the OGSM website after this Congress finishes. I congratulate Dr. Pramita and her team on the publication and the launch of this clinical practice guidelines. This CPG is not only wonderful, it is also a prime example of what we can all establish if we were to join hands all these bodies that are here today. And I look forward to further collaborations. On behalf of OGSM and of the all doctors treating women, I thank you for all your hard work for putting this together. Thank you for that lovely speech, Dr. Ho Mei Lin. I would like to call upon our next honourable speaker, Dr. Ho Chun Moi, President of the Malaysian Menopause Society, to give her speech. Good morning, Dr. Premita Damodaran, Chair of CPG, and Dr. Hu Mei Lin, President of OGSM, Datuk Professor Dr. Siti Zawia Omar, President of the College of ONG, Academy of Medicine, ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, and my colleagues. Thank you for joining us today in launching this Clinical Practice Guidelines on Management of Menopause. The purpose of launching this CPG is to create awareness that the treatment of menopause has been updated. It provides new guidelines to our healthcare professionals, especially our front line. The primary care doctors, they are here today, I met some of them, GPs, general practitioners, family medicine specialists, gynecologists, endocrinologists and all other doctors from other specialties so that they can give accurate and consistent advice to women. Doctors can then educate women on menopause issues, so women can make informed decisions about managing their menopause. And you'll be wondering, what is this Malaysian Menopause Society? We are already 25 years old, established in 1997. And Professor Dr. 
Nick Nasri here. He's the founder of the uh, Malaysian Menopause Society. And Prof Nick has been very supportive of the society for the past 25 years. Thank you, Prof, for your guidance. <laughs> the Malaysian Menopause Society is unique because it comprises healthcare professionals and also the general public. So all our events are two prongs, for doctors and for the public. And our aims are to raise awareness of menopause, to provide a social support network for women and their spouses in their golden years. And we promote education on menopause. We create a forum for the discussion of issues on menopause. And most important of all, to improve the standard of clinical care for menopausal women. There are about 1 billion menopausal women in the world now. 1 billion. It's a huge population of menopausal women. And women spend more than one third of their life. We are talking about more than 30 years of their life in the menopausal years. And many women drop out of the workforce around the age of 50, 50 plus, when menopause strikes. Yeah? They have all these hot flashes, night sweat, mood swing, cannot sleep, cannot concentrate. Then they get fired from the job or they quit their job. Or, and they have problems with their husband because of dry vagina, painful intercourse and so on. And also these women, uh, many years later, may develop long-term complications of menopause osteoporosis, heart disease, dementia, fractures, and so on. So the Malaysian Menopause Society is a platform for reaching out to healthcare professionals and the general public as well on the education and management of menopause. And the Malaysian Menopause Society organizes continuous professional development programs throughout the country, like roadshows and local and international conferences to update doctors on menopause management. Malaysian Menopause Society also organizes the Malaysian International Conference on Menopause every other year. And three years from now, in 2025, the Malaysian Menopause Society will host the scientific meeting of the Asia Pacific Menopause Federation and other milestones for the society. We educate our members and general public through forums and talks. The next event is a full-day public forum on 15 October soon to celebrate World Menopause Day at Sunway Resort Hotel. This event is for MMS members and also for the general public. Admission is free, but registration is compulsory. <laughs> Most women and some healthcare professionals concentrate on the risk of menopause hormone therapy. Yeah? They are very worried about the side effect, which is actually very little, very minute. It's not common, it's rare. Instead of looking into the enormous long-term benefits. And I hope our media who are here today can help us to create awareness that safer treatment options are now available. These treatment options can improve women's quality and quantity of life in the menopausal years. Early initiation of menopause hormone therapy benefits women's heart, bones, brain, vagina, skin, fat distribution, and so on. The first 10 years of menopause are the window of opportunity for women to reap the maximum benefits of menopause hormone therapy. So women below the age of 60, most of you are below 60, and within 10 years of menopause, if you're suffering from hot flushes, night sweat, Okay, recurrent UTI, dry vagina or incontinence or have high risk of osteoporosis, you can choose to take menopause hormone therapy if you have no contraindications. Because hot flushes is not just hot flushes. Those women who suffer from hot flushes has a two times increased risk of developing heart disease and osteoporosis fracture later on. So don't take it lightly, take it seriously. Okay? And the MHT that we use now, menopause hormone therapy, is differs from the one used 20 years ago. Now we use safer estrogen and progesterone, a safer route of administration, and the lowest effective appropriate dose. The 20 years follow-up of the Women's Health Initiative study found that women who took estrogen therapy, that means they have 
done hysterectomy, hysterectomized. They do not need progesterone. So they take estrogen therapy only. They have a 23% lower risk of breast cancer. It's lower. And 40% lower risk of mortality from breast cancer. And early initiation of menopause hormone therapy, whether ET estrogen therapy or estrogen progesterone therapy, reduces mortality from all causes. Okay, women on hormone actually live longer. That's the 20 years follow-up yeah, from the WHI study. So with better health, women can continue working after menopause until a ripe old age. Hence, they have a purposeful golden year and at the same time can con contribute to the society and economy of our country, can continue paying income tax. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> And starting menopause hormone therapy, as soon as menopausal symptoms arise, is crucial because when started early, the benefits of menopause hormone therapy far outweigh its risk. In Malaysia today, we have about 1.5 million women between the age of 50 to 59. 1.5 million. These women are in the window of opportunity. If we reach out to these women, 10 to 20 years from now, we will have a healthier generation of menopausal women. Less women will be taking all those like three highs, high cholesterol, hypertension, diabetes, medicine, you know, everybody taking so much medicine. Those who take hormone therapy, only one small pill a day or just some cream on, huh? just rub some cream on the body, that's it, instead of taking multiple medication. And media play a vital role. We need your help, media. I hope we can work together to reach out to these 1.5 million Malaysian women aged 50 to 59 whom we can help to improve the quality and quantity of life in the menopausal years. The uptake of menopause therapy in Malaysia is only 7%. So 1.5 million, only 100,000 are taking hormone therapy. There are so many women who are not treat, being treated. And menopause is a beautiful time because you have paid all your mortgage, your children completed their studies, okay, and they're supporting themselves, and you don't have to work for money anymore, you work for fun, okay? That's when you can choose to do what you love, but you need good health to enjoy the golden years. So don't be afraid of menopause. I have patients in their 70s, 80s, who still have lots of energy, physically active, very productive, and enjoying life, yeah? Menopause is not the end, but a new beginning to a long, healthy, and meaningful life if we do the right things at the right time and take advantage of the window of opportunity. Thank you. Thank you for that very informative speech, Dr. Ho Chun Moi, and for also further emphasizing the importance of good and proper management of menopause in our community. Unfortunately, our next guest of honor, Yang Berbahagia Tuan Khairi Jamaluddin, Minister of Health, is unable to make an appearance this morning. However, he has gracious, graciously taken some time out of his busy schedule to record a speech for us and will be delivering it virtually via a pre-recorded video. Dr. Pramita Damodaran, Chair of the Developmental Group Clinical Practice Guidelines on Management of Menopause in Malaysia and Chair of the Menopause Subdivision Obstetrical and Gynecological Society of Malaysia, OGSM. Dr. Hu Mei Li, President of the Obstetrical and Gynecological Society of Malaysia. Dr. Ho Chun Moi, President of the Malaysian Menopause Society. Professor Dr. Dr. Siti Zawiya Omar, President of the College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Academy of Medicine. Members of the Developmental Group of the CPG on the Management of Menopause in Malaysia, Council Members of the OGSM Wan Tuan Wan Tuan Yang Saya Hormat Islam. Salamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh dan Salam Warga Malaysia Sehat Sejahtera. 
It is indeed an honor and privilege for me to launch the clinical practice guidelines on the management of menopause in Malaysia today during the 29th International Congress of the Obstetrical and Gynecological Society of Malaysia. This guideline, which is a joint collaboration between OGSM and the Malaysian Menopause Society, along with the Academy of Medicine Malaysia, is a crucial guideline for the country as menopause affects every woman. The woman's health during her postmenopausal years carries an enormous weight towards the health and economic productivity of our nation. Menopause is a state of natural ovarian senescence with accompanying estrogen deficiency. The average age of menopause in Malaysia is around 50 years. Unfortunately, menopause is often not talked about in the Asian culture as it is associated to have a negative connotation with regards to women's aging concern. Simply put, it is the time standard. Women are made to accept menopause as a natural and an inevitable process in their lives. And many menopausal women who are in distress are reluctant to come forward to seek help. 2021 to 2030 has been declared by the United Nations General Assembly as the decade of healthy aging. This is a global collaboration bringing together governments, civil society, international agency, professional, academia, the media, and the private sector for 10 years of concerted, catalytic, and collaborative action to foster longer and healthier lives. Malaysia is now an aging society with 7% of our population above the age of 65 years. By the year 2050, we will be an age nation with 14% of our population projected to be above 65 years. Malaysians are getting older but not necessarily healthy. The average lifespan of the Malaysian woman in 2021 is 78.3 years, compared to 73.2 years for the Malaysian man. And half of our ladies will live their lives beyond the age of 78 years. This clinical practice guideline is an important start in Malaysia on what we can do for our aging women as preventive and early detection strategies could be implemented as a woman goes through menopause. One third of the lives of women are going to be without the hormone estrogen, making them susceptible to a multitude of problems, physical, social, psychological, sexual, and mental health issues, along with medical problems such as coronary heart disease, non-communicable diseases, osteoporosis, and cancer. Coronary heart disease is the leading cause of death for both men and women in Malaysia, and it is more prevalent in the postmenopausal women as compared to younger women. NCDs are estimated to account for 74% of all deaths in Malaysia, and the loss of estrogen can cause an increase in abdominal obesity, which in turn increases the risk of non-communicable diseases such as diabetes, high blood pressure, and high cholesterol levels. A recent report from the Ministry of Health Malaysia and the World Health Organization WHO revealed that non-communicable diseases, particularly cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and cancer, cost the Malaysian economy upwards of 9 billion ringgit, equivalent to about 0.65% of the country's gross domestic product. Reducing the burden of NCDs would make a significant difference to the health and also to the economy of our country. Osteoporosis, another condition that is a consequence of estrogen loss, has detrimental effects on a woman's health. Globally, the number of hip fractures due to osteoporosis is projected to increase from 1.1 million in 2018 to 2.5 million in 2050. 
current local Malaysian data shows that the morbidity and mortality after a hip fracture is as high as 20% in the first year and only 25% resume normal activity. This carries a significant healthcare burden, not only to the country, but also to the community and families caring for this population. Many women suffer from hot flushes, sleep disturbances, joint pain, and mood swing, but do not seek help even if these symptoms affect their quality of life. Menopause also occurs at a time when other social and family problems may occur. Retirement, which relates to the loss or reduced earnings, medical health problems in the family, children leaving home for study and being caregivers to older parents. All this, compounded with the hormonal changes she is going through, can be tough for her, and it is vital as healthcare workers that she is guided and managed appropriately. There has been a lack of tendency in seeking treatment for menopausal symptoms among women. Rampant misconceptions about hormonal therapy may be contributed by several factors, such as social mores, fabrication of information through media, and differing practices of medical personnel based on inconsistent scientific data. Prevalence of information through unmonitored media and internet has to some extent contributed to perplexing information playing down the value of good scientific facts, and this has to be changed. Menopausal hormone therapy remains to be an effective option for menopausal symptoms. Robust clinical data has indicated the effectiveness and safety of these therapies in early menopause. It is therefore apt to reappraise the current evidence available and the production of this guideline is timely to encourage healthcare professionals to play an important role in promoting counseling and providing health education regarding menopausal hormonal therapy. Awareness towards problems that menopause can bring, preventive strategies, early detection, and menopause management is essential. We need to deal with this as a nation. It is no more a woman's problem or something that only a woman deals with. We need to take away the menopause vacuums that have been created over the years remove the stigma of being the aging woman and talk more openly about menopausal health. It is my fervent hope that this CPG would be the first step in that direction by educating our healthcare workers to be proactive in managing menopausal health. I would like to thank the development group of the CPG once again for a job well done. And my thanks also go out to the team at the Malaysian Health Technology Assessment Sector, MOH Malaysia, for their thoroughness in making the guideline world standard. To all of you here present today, congratulations again, and all the very best in educating and promoting menopausal health in an effort to make our older Malaysian women age gracefully and to enjoy their menopausal Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that wraps up the speeches for the day. We will now proceed with the highlight of this morning's event, the official launch. Now, this CPG on menopause management is a joint collaboration by the OGSM, the Malaysian Menopause Society, along with the College of Obstetrics and Gynecology Academy of Medicine Malaysia. So, May I have the wonderful women who are at the helm of these organizations to come up on stage for the unveiling of these clinical practice guidelines. Once again, up on stage, Dr. Pramita Damodaran, Dr. Hu Mei Lin, Dr. Ho Chun Moi, and this time, joined by Professor Dato Dr. Siti Zawiyah Omar, President, College of the ONG Academy of Medicine Malaysia. Right, Dr. Premita, your hand, please. Standing by.
biometric verification commencing. Verification completed. Welcome, Dr. Premitha Dharma Daran. Dr. Ho Chun Moi. Dr. Hu Mei Lin. Clinical Practice Guidelines on Management of Menopause in Malaysia is now officially launched. All right, thank you, ladies. All right, that was a spectacular display. We will be having a video presentation up next for the finale of this event and it will be followed by a photography session prior to ending our program with a little bit of conversation with the media. On behalf of the developmental group of the CPG on man management of menopause and the speakers today, I would like to thank all of you for taking time out of your day to join us this morning for the launch of the clinical practice guidelines on the management of menopause in Malaysia. Your presence was most appreciated. Thank you once again and have a good Friday. Oh my God, we got a Lulus from MOH. BK, we are done. We are really, really done. Yes, Dr. Vita, we are done. Finally, we presented so well and answered perfectly. Well done, Dr. Pimita. Our CPG is approved. Congratulations, Dr. Pramita, and well done to the whole team. from HUKM. I am very happy and excited to see and read the new CPG guideline on the latest management of menopause in Malaysia. We will be more confident to manage menopause patients in the clinic. Thank you very much. Bye! Hi, I am Dr. Dinesh, 4-year registrar of HUKM ONG and talking about the latest menopause CPG, I am really excited to download and read it. As we all know, menopause have always been an important topic in our exam, especially the VIVA. So, heads off to the menopause uh, committee. Thank you so much. We are the House Officers from HUKM. We are looking forward to the latest CPG on management of menopause in Malaysia. Hi everyone, I am Jamia from UITM. It was such a privilege to be part of the expert panel to develop this PG for menopause chaired by the ever-dynamic Dr. Pramita. I'm super excited for the launching and you will see how awesome it is. See you there. This CPG is the work of many experts in this field who will give the latest evidence and the work has been reviewed by international experts. And one good thing about this CPG is the religious aspect on the management of menopause. This is something special about it. I've been very lucky because I've had that opportunity to work with a wonderful group. A group that was full of enthusiasm, always brimming with ideas, always discussing. Because what we wanted to do was to give you a CPG that was not only user-friendly or practical-based, but also one that was full of all the current data. The one person that I would really like to thank is Dr. Amin from the HTA division of the Ministry of Health because it was his patience and perseverance that has got us to where we are today. Thank you, Dr. Amin. So that's the end of the road for all of us who have written the CPG and now we give you the CPG. And we do hope that the next time you do see a menopausal woman in front of you, you would 
actually think about this CPG and help her give her the best menopausal years that she can have. Thank you very much. Hello everyone. I was very proud to be the external reviewer for the clinical practice guideline on menopause for Malaysia and I commend it to everyone, not just to our students and our trainees, but also to our colleagues. It is an excellent document worthy of reading and rereading. All right, the event has ended. You all may be dismissed.